yeah, I just wanted to keep sort of riding the wave of Jesus and the psychedelic. So I figured uh, I would talk today about um, some of the, like, Jesus visions I've had during uh, ayahuasca or during uh, mushrooms. And uh, the first one, which I actually only happened three times, um, but the first time it happened, I was in Oaxaca in Mexico on this on this top of a mountain um, with this old lady named Natalia in the same community that Maria Sabia, Sabina came from, uh, Huatla de Jimenez. Uh, it's a little community of people that take mushrooms for um, spiritual sacrament and for physical healing. So I was interested in this. So I went there to, um, to meet some of these people and I met Natalia. Natalia gave me this mushroom ceremony at night, this little old woman. You can see the video on my YouTube channel. And um, during the ceremony, I was. she had these big pictures of Mother Mary, Jesus, and the Pope sort of lit by the candles. <laughs> and they were just staring at me while I was tripping. And it was, uh, it obviously inspired all kinds of biblical visions and imagery to pop up in my trip. And I had one um, really interesting poetic sort of uh, realization that Mother Mary, Mother Maria, is... Um, actually represents the spirit of the earth, um, the mother of, of where we come from. And seemingly, we sort of just sprout up here on this planet, all life. You know, I'm looking out here, there's tons of life outside, trees, grass, bugs, birds. And all of this stuff seemingly just seems to pop up like a virgin birth. And the earth is just a womb for life to emerge out of. You could argue the sun is, is, the, is the father. But, um, yeah, so this was like a really poetic thing that happened to me, and it kind of blew my mind during the trip. I was like, wow. So Mother Mary represents the, uh, the, the, the birth of all life seemingly coming from nothing. And Jesus um, was shown to me as being the potential of the human soul, of uh, or the pureness of the human soul, who we really are deep in our core, is this um, compassion, this love, this understanding, even in the face of of hate and anger and brutality, um, just complete pureness. And uh, the mushroom was explaining to me like like this is what Jesus is, and it was also trying to tell me that Jesus was a historical figure, and he he. He um, was realized. He realized the human soul, and he was able to live through the soul rather than his ego. Like Neem Karoli Baba once said, when someone Ramdas, when Ramdas gave Neem Karoli Baba acid LSD, Baba sat there, and uh, the story goes that it looked like he went to say something, and then instead a tear fell down his face, and. He said that things like LSD, psychedelics, can take you and bring you into a room with Christ where you can hang out with Jesus, but you have to leave. And he said, it's better to become Jesus than it is to just hang out, hang out in a room with him. Um, and I actually kinda, I got that story mixed up. It just kind of hit me while I was saying it. But um, they asked Neem Kurli Baba uh, how to meditate. And he said, meditate like Christ. And they're like, meditate like Christ. And these guys are like a bunch of, a bunch of Americans in India. So they're like trying to escape the, the spiritual traditions of America. And they go to India and this guy's basically forcing them to examine their own traditions. Um, or their, the dominant traditions of the culture that they're from. Which in this case is Christianity. And he said, meditate like Christ. So they're like, meditate like Christ? How do you meditate like Christ? And this is when he, the tear shed, and he said, he lost himself in love. So uh, it's, a, it's a good story. Um, so he lost himself in love. And um, yeah, the mushroom was like showing this to me. He lost himself in love. He lost himself in love. And it was, uh, it was really beautiful. And another time I had a crazy Jesus vision on DMT was when I was here uh, drinking ayahuasca in Peru. And um, for some reason, Jesus popped up in my trip. And I was like, 
asking ayahuasca, like, what's up with Jesus? What what is up with Jesus? Give me the give me the rundown on Jesus. And here in Peru, they have what's called an ikaro. The shamans here sing these ikaros, and they're these divine songs that they learn from the plants. You can kind of associate it maybe with, with like a mantra. It's a sort of like a holy vibration that sort of guides you through your experience. It guides you through when you were tripping. It helps you um, heal, and it really does. It's an interesting thing. Like it's a it's a weird sort of uh, indigenous science that these people have figured out during the the sensitive states of the of the trance induced by the plant. And um, so yeah, I was asking ayahuasca, what's up with Jesus? And she explained to me that Jesus is an Ikaro. He's a song that's being sung um, through generation to generation and, and it's sort of like a little hitchhiker that's just jumping its way from heart to heart, healing everyone that comes in contact with it if they're open to it. It's really beautiful. I was able to see Jesus as like the sort of traditional um, imagery of Jesus where he was like really sad looking, he had a crown of thorns on his head and um, but he was happy, he was sad, but he was not not happy, but he was like he was weeping for our pain. Like he was taking on all, all of our pain and he was weeping sort of in pain, but also in like in love, like he was doing it out of love. And this is what ayahuasca, this was the image that ayahuasca was beaming into my awareness and basically saying like he is a divine mantra that's being passed down. And, you know, for those of it that are ready to hear this song, it opens up your heart a little bit, you know, it cracks open this, these, these tight brick walls that we build around ourselves. And, um, yeah, you know, I, I love Jesus. I'm not a Christian by any means, but like, I've been on so many Christian pilgrimages throughout my life. I've been to uh, Bethlehem and Jerusalem and I've been to the places where Jesus is, was supposed to have been killed and where he was supposed to have been resurrected. And I've been to the tomb of Moses. Um, I've been to the tomb of Abraham. And um, so I've done like a lot of these Christian pilgrimages. For some reason, they just kind of, they just happened. I don't really even know how. I just kind of follow my feet and they take me around. And um, it's a real beautiful um, religion if you can if you can get into the sort of esoteric, mystical side of it. Or at least this is my opinion, you know. Like, uh like the Gnostics or something like that. You know, I really I really appreciate their perspective of Christianity. I feel like the church has really uh has really uh utilized their control of the dogma and they use that as a way to, you know, gain power over people and make money and um they prey on people's sort of faith and their uh their wellness and their um and their their compassion. And they extract it. It's very demonic, actually, in a way, the the church these days. And um, but, anyways, yeah, this is uh, some of the some of the some of the visions I've had from psychedelics. This is what the psychedelic told me about Jesus. Yeah, I don't know. Shout out to Jesus. Um, you know what came after him is not his fault. So we just got to go to the source. And uh, not get so lost in the retranslations of his words or whatever. And just try to, to take the essence of what it means to be um, in love. You know, what does love mean? Is love in an in exchange of, uh, of emotion between two people? You know, I love you because you did this for me and you love me because I give you this. Or is love simply just forgiveness and understanding unconditional you know unconditional means without condition it doesn't matter if I get something from you or if I give something to you or this or that it's simply is what it is it's, love seems to be what the human soul is you know we layer ourselves with all these things that help our identities and help us you know uh, gather our desires and manifest our desires so we take on all these different things that um, maybe appear as being self-love, but 
Even the Hindus have realized this, that bhakti, they call it bhakti, which means something like devotion or service. It's like our highest position is being in service unconditionally in service to the world. I mean, that is really our, our, our true state here on this world. You know, we are in service to the environment. The environment isn't in service to us. And that's kind of the illusion we live in is that this is all for us. But um, it's not. We are actually in service to this world. Otherwise, it will be taken from us, which we are kind of seeing in the form of climate change in the form of this pandemic and you know the universe has a way of balancing itself out when it gets a little out of align out of alignment so um yeah you know and i feel like we all have a natural inclination to help things you know when we see an animal we want to help it we want to hug it we want to love it um and it, it seems like uh culture and dogma uh really give us the narration of of an ego that that benefits the power structure of the culture and we lose connection with that we lose connection with our with our nature and with actual nature does that make sense if we were able to live without culture and in harmony we would be like jesus you know that's that's you know it's a, in a place of accepting anyways this is what the mushrooms and ayahuasca have shared with me about jesus and i'm i'm happy to deliver their message to the world <laughs> so uh yeah now it's time for breakfast i'm gonna go eat so um yeah i don't know i hope you guys uh hope you guys like these few jesus videos i've been uploading <laughs> And if you want to go see me at the tomb of Jesus um, and like my little exploration around Israel and stuff like that or Jordan or um, even India, you know, I went on some cool Jesus excursions in India. Um, that's all on my YouTube channel. So just I have a whole playlist full of Israel stuff and um, yeah, go check it out if you're interested. So thanks for watching. Catch you guys around.